from Dawn Shade Box of Nation. <laughs> Knock him the hell out. That's what I hope. I hope for a miracle. If this fight goes on, if it doesn't change, I hope he get knocked out. Seriously. And I'm a fan of Oscar Valdez. I am. I'm hurt by this. I'm really hurt by this. You know, I, I went on national TV, on live TV, and said that this guy is now my hero after he defeated Burchell. I, I'm sick to my stomach about this situation. And I think that whether it's a team or not or whatever it is, nobody care about that. You test positive. So everybody can think whatever the heck they want to think. And I'm thinking that you're dirty, my friend. That's just it, you know. And that's just, man, I, uh, I'm done. I'm done. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So you heard the frustration from Tim Bradley, how upset he is that Oscar Valdez not only tested positive for a PED, but the WBC is refusing to suspend him. In fact, they made up some new rule where they put him on probation for a year. He doesn't get stripped of his title and the fight still goes on. He's still gonna be fighting after testing positive for a banned substance. And guys, I wanna make it really clear. This is definitely a PED. What does PED stand for? Performance enhancing drug, right? So anything that you take that is banned from VADA or USADA and it enhances your performance in training, it's a PED. And this banned drug that Oscar Valdez took, it enhances him to lose weight at a faster pace while retaining muscle. I mean, it's so good that so many boxers are speaking out on this. While the majority of old media is not even reporting this, social media, and right over here, new media, along with the professional boxing community, they're making this a huge story which shows you how irrelevant old media is starting to become. These professional boxers, they have to realize the power they have when it comes to holding that microphone, when it comes to the platform that they have. They can really make serious changes in the sport of boxing. This is one of the first times that boxers of all races have stood up against the corruption and the double standards in the sport of boxing. I mean, you guys remember when Canelo Alvarez tested positive, boxers were silent. Boxers were afraid to speak on it. The only people that were speaking on it was right over here, new media and social media, right? But this is why I say this is one of the first times where boxers are not afraid anymore. And if boxers keep doing this with the power and the platform that they have, they can seriously make boxing a much better sport. It's time for these boxers, trainers, promoters, managers to start speaking out against the corruption when it comes to the WBC. The WBC belt used to be looked at as the most respected belt that you could have. But now the organization is making the WBC look like a complete joke. They continue to make up their own rules, basically change the rules just to protect their Mexican champions. Just for the fans that are new to boxing here, the WBC or the WBC president is from Mexico. And coincidentally, five Mexican fighters fighting under the WBC tested positive for PEDs and the WBC gave all five of them clearance. Oscar Valdez, Julio Cesar Martinez, Ray Vargas, Luis Neri, and Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez was the only one that was suspended, but he was only suspended for six months, which is basically like suspending Canelo for a week because Canelo's next fight wasn't going to be until six months. But the WBC president made sure that Canelo's suspension ended right before his very next fight. Then the WBC creates this franchise status, which is really the MBF belt, because the only time this belt has been summoned is when a fighter did not want to fight a black fighter, right? 
when Charlo was Canelo's mandatory at 160 for two years. And it was time for Canelo to either fight his mandatory Charlo or wave the white flag and surrender the belt to Charlo. He decided to surrender the belt to Charlo. But in order to save face for Canelo Alvarez, this is when the WBC decided to create this MBF belt, which by the WBC's own admission said that it's not even a belt, it's just a status. So in other words, it's just a trophy, right? Once again, it's a way for a fighter to not look that bad when he has to vacate his belt. The other time this whole franchise MBF belt was used was when Lomachenko didn't want to fight Devin Haney. Devin was his mandatory. And then later, after the WBC president admitted that it was Canelo and Lomachenko that requested for this MBF title, Mauricio Suleiman, he then says, you know what? Fighters should not have to waste their time fighting useless mandatories. And that's the reason why he said he created this franchise status. Well, if that's the case, why did Canelo fight Abney Yildirim? You expect the boxing world to believe that fighting Jamal Charlo, who had been chasing this man Canelo for six years, was a champion at 154 and 160 undefeated, that was a waste of time for Canelo to fight him. But it wasn't a waste of time to fight Abney Yildirim? We know what time it is, don't we, guys? And this is the reason why, once again, like I said, these professional boxers, they need to address these issues. They need to fight against the corruption in the sport of boxing. The WBC is the most corrupt organization in boxing. And it's time for people that really want to make a change in the sport of boxing to address it. The irony is you have a lot of fans, non-black fans, obviously, that hate the PBC organization simply because, of course, a black man is running the organization. But I see so many Mexican fans and sometimes other non-black fans post comments in, the comment, in my comment section talking about how much they can't stand PBC and Canelo. He shouldn't even fight Caleb Plant and give PBC a paycheck. They're saying all of these things, but yet the WBC is destroying the sport of boxing and they don't even care about that. They don't even care about that. Oscar Valdez should have been suspended the same way Big Baby Miller was suspended. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what drug you test positive for as long as it's a drug that is banned by VADA or USADA. That's the only thing that matters. I mean, what is the purpose of the WBC having this drug-free clean program if you're not gonna punish the fighters for testing positive for banned drugs? I cannot believe. The WBC said they're gonna put Oscar Valdez on probation for one year. So in other words, he's telling all of these fighters, mainly the ones from Mexico, that you guys can get one freebie when it comes to testing positive for PEDs. So go ahead, dope up as much as you want, but just don't let it happen again after the first time. But we already know if Canelo tests positive a second time, then there's gonna be a new rule. Then the WBC, he's going to say, you know, we decided to create write-ups where we're going to give fighters three write-ups, meaning after a fighter tests positive for a banned substance against three different opponents on three different occasions, that's when we will suspend that fighter. This is the power that old media has given the WBC because they have no problem with the WBC doing this as long as it benefits the fighters that have the complexion for the protection. That's what you call having that great hope insurance. It covers everything. And for some of you fans that have gotten confused when I use the word hope, because I see maybe one or two comments where someone says, hey man, what do you mean? So-and-so isn't white. Hope doesn't mean just a white fighter. It means anyone that isn't black. I mean, to all my non-black boxing fans, especially the ones in the United States, just think about it for a second. Whenever you're watching a boxing match and there's a black guy against someone who isn't black, 
who are you hoping wins that fight? It's always going to be the guy who is in black, right? And we already know this for a fact because all you have to do is read the comments on the internet. You can go on almost any forum and you will seldomly ever see non-black fans in the comment section congratulating, praising, or defending a black fighter. But you will always see us congratulating fighters that are not black, that deserve the congrats, that deserve the praise because they got a good win, right? I mean, you can go back and you can watch plenty of my videos, plenty of my post-fight videos, and see me congratulating non-black fighters when they got big wins against black fighters. So at the end of the day, the WBC and all these drug cheats need to be dealt with. They all need to be treated like Big Baby Miller was treated and all the other fighters that got suspended for testing positive for banned substances. Always remember this, a microphone and a camera is the most dangerous weapon in the world. And it's time for everyone with a platform to start using that microphone to clean up the sport of boxing. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the big day. SMPs at Scout Carolinas. I need a real restoration. This is my makeover right here. So, Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. Get ready to take your striking game to the next level with the Focus Ball. Dramatically improved footwork, timing, head movement, hand-eye coordination, reflex, and overall fight IQ. It's lightweight and extremely portable, so you can train every time, everywhere. When you don't have a coach to do mitt work, get a focus ball. When you don't have a heavy bag to hit, get a focus ball. When you don't have a sparring partner, get yourself a focus ball. And when you just wanna have fun punching and kicking, get a focus ball. When you train with the focus ball, you train your eyes and your brain to read punches so that you can hit and not get hit. Making this very simple device a must have for all combat sports athletes and enthusiasts alike. So if you want to take your striking game to the next level, don't wait. Get the focus ball now. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.